Hi, everyone. Welcome to Webinar Wednesday. I'm here with my colleague, Zach Rocket, and he will be talking with us today about um, RPA, Automation Anywhere, and specifically Automation 360 development. And we will start in just a moment. Um, just a couple little housekeeping things here. Just want to let you know that the session is being recorded. It will be on our Accelerate YouTube channel, and it will also be at our up on our site at accelerate.com slash library slash videos. And we will be sending you the URL after this webinar concludes, uh, probably within two or three hours. Um, just to let you know a little bit about Accelerate, my name is Anne. I've been with Accelerate for 13 years, but we've been in business for 20 years now, and we deliver a lot of um, training at client sites all over the U.S., worldwide, and online. And we do teach a lot of RPA classes, but we also teach um, programming classes, Microsoft topics, data visualization like Tableau and Power BI, data science, Python and R, and of course, uh, Automation 360, Blue Prism, and UiPath. But today we're here to talk about Automation 360, and I'll go ahead and put this link in the, in the chat uh, in a bit, but this is a page that just shows the classes that we teach, and we do private customized training for teams of three or more, either live online or in person at your site, and um, Zach, who's here with us today, teaches all of them, and he really is the perfect person to be doing this webinar today um, because not only is he a certified Automation 360 instructor and developer, he creates training courses, he trains worldwide, online and in person, um, but not only that, he actually lives it because he's an RPA consultant and he manages a team of Automation 360 developers. So he's not just teaching it, he's actually living it and breathing it. And I, I was on a session with him, he trained some of our staff, and it was kind of mind blowing. And I'll, one more cool thing, and then I'll pass it right on to Zach. Uh, not only does he know Automation 360 backwards and forwards, he knows the other RPA platforms like UiPath and Blue Prism. So if you've got questions like, you know, compare and contrast, he can, he can also speak to that. So he's got a really, well-rounded knowledge of RPA and can bring that into the classroom. Um, so you're in for a treat. Um, Zach, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you. And I will be here, but I will just be in the background. Cool, excellent. Well, thank you very much, Anne. And nice to virtually meet everyone in the webinar. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen, make sure I'm showing the right one. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so I'm going to talk you through slightly what we're going to go through. Of course, this webinar is a introduction to Automation 360 development. So we're going to start off and we're going to look at the tool. I'm going to show you an example. I'll explain to you what RPA is for those that are unsure. Uh, and then as we go through, I'm going to log into the automation tool, which is Automation 360. And I'm going to speak you through the development workbench. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to live build a RPA solution. So I'm just going to show you a first initial video. Um, so let me fire up some slides. I won't go through too many, just a brief introduction. So for anyone that doesn't know what RPA is, as it says on the screen, RPA is a way of automating high volume processes so that recurring manual digital work is done by software robots or bots as we call them in the industry. Uh, so it's a software that effectively mimics human actions. Uh, any repetitive process, we all have them in our day-to-day -day jobs. We target these with RPA and by therefore automating them, we save time. Uh, we can allow the processes to be completed faster, more accurately than a human possibly could. There's plenty of different tools out there. As Anne discussed, uh, I am um, and qualified in a few different ones. I definitely live and breathe it, that's for sure. I've been working in the RPA industry for around five years now. Um, I've got a few quotes about how popular RPA is. You can see the first one, which is from the Gartner Report in 2020. And this shows that the it's one of the fastest growing segments in the enterprise software market. So in 2018, the software market for RPA grew 63%. In 2019, it grew 62%. And if you compare that to the rest of the enterprise software market with 13 and 11 percent, you can really see how this is a really emerging technology. And especially again in last year, in well 2020, 
uh, it continued to grow even with the COVID-19 uncertainties it still grew by 38 percent and really if anything I think the whole um, COVID situation in the world really showed the requirement for automation. So moving on to my next slide, I'm going to talk a little bit about the specific tool before I actually dive in and begin to show it hands on. How does Automation 360 differ from other automation software? Well, it's specifically designed for ease of use by the user. And you will see this when I actually go into the development workbench. It's a really intuitive user interface and it's built for business users as well as uh, RPA developers and people from IT backgrounds. No coding experience is necessary. It's a really straightforward tool to pick up. It's all drag and drop style code development, a huge library of actions that plug straight into applications such as Excel, SAP, databases. And we have tools that actually can recreate the human steps that we would take on our laptops or our computers by clicking through websites, clicking through applications. Also, constant improvement automation 360 is updated regularly constantly having new commands added and new functionality as a developer it's fantastic it means that i'm always having new weapons added to my arsenal uh, as a qualified instructor it's a bit of a pain because it means i have to keep updating my training material but it's definitely worth it it's definitely worth it uh, and then the final piece is a cloud delivery option means near infinite scalability so automation 360 as a tool is fantastic because we just access it through uh, cloud-based options. So we can access it through our web browsers, meaning that we really can automate anywhere. So I'm going to dive into the software. And as discussed, this is gonna be an introduction to Automation 360 development. So we're gonna go ahead and actually live build a small individual bot for a process. So as you can see, I am in a Google Chrome browser. This is how we access the RPA tool. I don't need to have any heavy, heavy installations on my laptop. Now I'm going to show you a process that we are going to build. So it's a fairly simple one, but a definite use case that I have seen and I've built in a number of different places. So let's pretend our business has these Excel file inputs. Just some customer details in there, their first name, their last name, uh, their phone number, email address, a specific decision, yes or no, and what car they drive. We are going to make it so that our automation bot automatically picks up the input file and it's going to go and fill out this web portal for us. So to start with, I will show a video of the process running so we can see what our end result is going to be and then we will go through and step-by-step -step build it. So you'll see the RPA bot uses exactly the same portals we would as a human. In the background, what you can actually see is it's accessing that Excel file, extracting the data. It's making a few decisions based on there as well, things such as the do I click the yes button? Do I press the no button? Now it's going to fly through. It's going to pick up each and every uh, customer that was registered in our spreadsheet. There's a couple of multiple different spreadsheets within there as well. So it could fly through. And one thing you will find about RPA bots is not only are they very fast, but they're also extremely accurate. It always follows a very strict uh, sequence of steps. And also, of course, the big benefit of a bot is you can run it near on 24 seven as well. So really gives us some enhanced benefits for our business. So there we go, it ran through there. So that is going to be our end goal. So now I'm going to go ahead and live build that in front of you. And as I go through, I will explain how I'm building it as well. So I'm gonna jump to our homepage on Automation Fig 60. And I'm going to come straight in and I'm going to select my create a bot option. Now, I'm going to give my automation a name. So maybe I'll name it after the process. So I'm going to say customer registrations. Now, once I choose the create and edit option, 
it's taken me into my development workbench. So this is where all my coding happens. And this is where you're gonna really see how nice the user interface is. So in the middle goes my code. On the left-hand side, I have all of the different commands that are at my disposal. So if I'm working with Excel, I can come in, choose some of my different Excel options, everything's drag and drop, I can pull things around. If I'm working with email-based commands, I could go and choose my email options. If I'm working with a browser, I can go and do a browser option. So this is actually where I'm going to start. And I'm going to drag in a open step. And I simply want to go ahead and open my uh, Cognito Forms browser. Um, so what I might do, actually, let me just go and grab that link. So here I'm going to specify which web page would I like to open. So I can there give it straight to the link. This is a Cognito form. This is a customer database that we have created purely for test purposes. I can choose the specific browser. Always a good practice because I want to make sure it's going to pick up in the open in the specific one that I want it to. I don't want to leave it as default browser because, of course, different machines, different people have default browsers. Uh, Automation Anywhere works with Internet Explorer, Microsoft Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, or Microsoft Edge. In my case, I am going to go for the Edge option. I'm going to save it. And then maybe I might just run that single line of code just to check to see if it actually works, if it opens up a web page that I want. There we go, perfect. So now I want to get my bot to simulate some data entry into these fields. The way that I can do this is a really powerful tool, and this is this is probably the most used tool within Automation 360 as well. And it starts in this button on the top bar here, and it is called the recorder. When I press, you'll see I've had this little window pop open that says to begin recording, select the window you want to record from, and then click the recorder type. If I choose the drop down box, it will show me all my different windows that I have open. Uh, this is the one I want, I believe, Cognito Customer Database, Cognito Forms in Microsoft Edge. So now I have my universal recorder. And what this is going to do, you see once I press the start recording button, if I move the mouse around my screen, it's surrounding all of these different items in the red boxes. And what this red box symbolizes is a different object within my screen. So this is the object for the first name field. This is the last name, this is the phone number. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, I'm gonna go ahead and just fill out this form manually as I would if I was the business user completing the process. So as I go through and record this, the recorder is actually watching every action that I do. And as it goes through, if I go and submit that form. Perfect. Maybe I'll refresh my page to get me back to where I was. Now, I filled out the process as I would one time with the recorder running. So I'm happy to say, OK, let's finish that. And then you'll notice as soon as I press the finish button, it has suddenly generated around 10, 11 different lines of code for me. And what it's actually done is transformed every single step that I did as a user, and it's completely created code for me to reenact those. So I have the first one. This is where I filled out that first name field. So you can see action that's happening. It's setting the text to Zach. The last name field, it does a set text to Rocket. And you'll see the same for each individual step. So it's a really powerful tool of recreating those human actions I did. And this universal recorder works in browsers, applications, near on anything that you can use as a user on your computer, the universal recorder will be able to interact with. It's a really powerful tool. So maybe in my case, if I, let's say, go back to Edge, maybe I'm going to close it. And I'll run it one time just to see what it does.
and it launches my browser. And it's gone and filled it out one time for me. So that's great. That's given me kind of the structure to the process. That's one thing I find that recorder button is really fantastic for. It's completed the process for me one time. It's got that bit of code down exceptionally fast. So now I can go and add the extra features that we need. So things such as making it actually read from that spreadsheet. So if I look on my desktop, I have my input files, a couple of different customers in there, all the fields that I require. So now how can we get our bot to read this file and use that data within? Well, this file for the input is a CSV. So on the left hand side, I can make use of our relevant CSV commands. So I can drag and drop, of course. I'm going to place mine just after the open section, but before my recorder captures, before those commands that are actually completing the process form. Because I want to, of course, extract that data beforehand. So when I drag it across on the right hand side on my action properties, this is where I can specify what I want the command to do. So again, I can say, OK, well, I have a desktop file. This is the one that I want to read. Let me go to my documents, my customer files. I will go and choose my cognito input number one. Now, my data did have a header, if you remember. So I'll tick that. That will do a couple of different things for me. First of all, it will ignore that first header row. So it means that I'm not going to extract that piece of data and accidentally input it into my portal, which is good. And as well as that, it's actually going to give me another option, which I'll explain later down the line. Uh, I can also trim any extra spaces. That's going to clean my data up, make sure I only have the values, no blank spaces before or after any values. So now I have that CSV file being read. Now it's a case of how do we make these steps repeat for every single person in this spreadsheet? Now, in this case, I have four different people, but maybe tomorrow I'll have a hundred, maybe on Friday I'll have a thousand. I want to make sure that every time my bot runs, it repeats these actions for every customer. I don't want any to be missed. And the way that I can do that is again, on my left-hand side, very straightforward in my actions list is a loop. And if I hover over the loop section, it gives me a slight description on the command and it says, repeats the actions in a loop until a break. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna drag that over. And you'll see it brings me my action properties on the right hand side again. And this is asking me, for what reason do I want to repeat the code? So I could say uh, for every row I have in a table, for every email I have in a mailbox, for every file in a folder. Well, for my case, mine is right on the top and it's for each row in a CSV. And that links to the CSV file I had above. So now it's going to repeat every single row that it sees. So it's going to iterate four times in this case. As well as that, we get another option that says assign the current row to this variable. Now, a variable is effectively a storage box. It's somewhere that we can store our data for us to then use later on in our commands. So that's something I want to do. It says I can assign the current row to a variable. So that's perfect for me. It means that I can store all of this data, which is going to be handy for inputting into my portal. I can give my variable a name, maybe make it quite clear as to what's in the variable. You want it to be very descriptive. So I will call it customer data. So now you'll also see in the flow view, I have a square box connected to that loop command. Now, anything inside of this square box is going to be repeated for that specific row. So now I know. Well, all of these different recorder lines, I want these to be repeated. So if I select the top one, hold down shift and select the bottom one, you see I have 10 actions selected. And again, really simply drag and drop and place it in the box. So now this is going to repeat for every single row. But at the moment, we still have our data hard coded. So we want to go ahead and replace this. 
what can we replace this with? Well, we have that variable that we referenced in this command here where it says assign the current row. So we have that data stored within the customer data variable. So now I'm going to go ahead. I deleted that hard coded value and I can either press my F2 character or I can press this icon within the text box and it will allow me to select my variable. Now, the interesting thing about this customer data variable, it's a record type variable, so it can hold multiple different values. So when I select that option, it's going to ask me, OK, well, which value do you want to select? I can either go by index. If I choose by index, then it's relevant to the column. So column A is index zero. Column B is index one. Column C is index two. So I could do that way if I wanted to. I could say, OK, well, I want to get the first name for this field. So I'm going to choose column zero, uh, index zero. But that's not massively reliable. If someone was to come in and maybe change the data and add a serial number function at the start, it's going to go and break my bot because he's still looking for index zero. Instead, the option that we're going to go for is by name. And I can specify the column name that I had, which was the first. And that by name feature feeds back to this contains headers. So if I have that contains headers ticked, not only does it A, ignore that first row of data, but it also brings it into the internal memory so that I can make use of it within my command. So now if I was to go and add a row into here, it's not going to matter because it's going off of the column headers instead of column locations. So I'll go through and replace the others as well. So the last name field, where the last name is. The phone field, where the phone number is. email or the email field and now I've got to this section where it's actually clicking instead of setting text so I can't replace it with a variable I need to get my bot to make a decision based on the data from within that uh, within that spreadsheet so either if it's a yes in the decision field click yes if it's a no click no well how can I make my automation 360 do this? How can I make it do one thing or another? How can I set different scenarios? Well, the way that I can do this is making use of a command called a if. And if I drag this in again, drag and drop, this time it gives me a gray box. And on the right hand side, also again, ask me, okay, well, it will run a sequence of actions if a condition is true. Now it's asking me, what is the condition? What, what, do, what scenario do you want me to set? So I could say, if an application is running, do these actions. If it's a certain date, do these actions. If a file exists, do them. Or in my case, if I come down here, I can say if a string value matches. So in my case, I could say the decision field within my spreadsheet, if that's equal to yes, and it could be equals to, not equals to, includes, does not include, if it's equal to yes, then action that yes button click. So anything inside this gray box will only ever happen if this scenario is met. So that's one side of the scenario. If it's yes, it will go and click that button. However, I need to capture the no side of things as well. I don't want to rely on the fact that this website for now defaults to no. You can guarantee the day that you go and put it into production, they will change. So we'll go and capture that side as well. Now I can do this in another way. Again, I can set another scenario linked to the first one. And at this time, I will come down. String condition again. I'm going to do effectively near enough the same thing. I'm going to check my decision field. For this time, I'm going to say if it's equal to no, then I want to tell it to go and press that no button. So I can go and pick out a recorder command 
a recorder command is what this recorder button also uses. You'll see recorder, capture, recorder, capture. Well, I can also individually do one of these commands myself as well by dragging it in, choosing the application that I want to work within. So customer database, Cognito Forms, and then coming in and capturing the object I want to. So I'm gonna here go and click that no button and specify the action that I want to do. So click. So now when it gets to this section, it will come in, it will check, see if it's equal to yes. If it is, clicks the yes button and then moves on. If it's not, then it will move to the right hand side, check this if statement, see if it's a no. Come press the no button. So then we can move back down. So we have the car field. I'm going to click that box. Now this one's a bit different. So it's a list view box, a drop down box. I've got a couple of different options within there. So again, I can't do a set text on this field because it's not somewhere for me to type into. But what you'll find with the recorder capture command is dependent on what the object I've selected is, I will have different options. So this one, because it's a drop down box, you'll see I can actually select an item in that list by a specific text. So here I can choose that option, go and select my variable for the column car, and it will find the corresponding list item, and select it. So that's another piece. I'll come down and do my final text box as well. This field, I believe, is number. Yeah. And then I've gone and selected the field. Perfect. So now, if I go and close this spreadsheet, maybe I'll also add a message box. A message box is just a visual command. And what this is going to do is this is just going to show me a slight bit of text that I enter for it to be displayed. So I'm going to say customer registered, just so we can see that it's got to this section and been deleted. Uh, I can make this automatically close the message box as well. That'd be good to do. So then we'll save this and let's give it a run. So it's gone and filled out the first one. Now it's new to the next customer. And then the next one as well. So that's great. It filled out form for all of the different customers that we have in this spreadsheet, but there's still some work to do. I still have multiple spreadsheets within here. Maybe my business has this folder which we all save our input files into for them to be processed. Well, I'm going to make the bot pick up more than just this individual file. I'm going to make it so it picks up any file that's dropped in here as well. So again, how can we do so? Well, it's all repetitive. So I will make use of another loop. And this loop, if I drag it in, it's going to be instead each file in a folder. So not only am I now processing every uh, row in the Excel file that I have, I'm also processing every row in every file in that folder. So to do this, I just have to grab the folder path, tell it which folder I want it to pick up each file in that folder. Have my C users. Now I can, again, make use of my variables to be able to store the relevant information. So I'm going to add one for the name. So I've got one variable that's going to store my file name. I'll make another one as well, which is going to hold my file extension. Again, notice how I'm slightly editing the names. I want them to be very clear as to what their contents are. So now every time it 
loops through and iterates through a file in this folder, it's going to update the, the value of this file name and file extension variable. So I can then drag the actions I want to be repeated into this loop. So of course I want the open of the CSV file to be within the loop, but as well as that, I also want the loop that completes every single row of every single file. So I will drag and drop that in there. And you'll notice that I can expand and collapse all of my different sections as well. It keeps my code very tidy. So now the only change I need to make here is at the moment, my file path for this open CSV file is still hard coded. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this section because this is the file name and extension. Well, I know that I now have these stored within my relevant variables. So my file name and then dot. Now you'll notice that I've been picking my variables through this variable selector. What I can do, and if it's something that you prefer as a developer, you can actually go in and just type the variable name as well. And that gives me the opportunity to select it there. So now my bot should come in, open the web page, loop through every file and every row within these files and complete the process for each individual sheet. It's going to make sure I pick up every single spreadsheet here. And because it's for each file in the folder, here I've got three. I could have 100. It would go and process all 100. It's going to repeat those steps for each individual one. So let's run it again and see if that works. You see it goes through, fills that form up very quickly. What you might also notice as well, actually, is if you look on my taskbar, Excel isn't open. That's one of the really powerful things about Automation 360 is we can access CSV files and in some instance, some other Excel file types as well without actually requiring to open Excel. So it makes it extremely fast, it makes it extra reliable as well. Uh, our automation, you can see, is flying through as well registering these customers. It's actually a little bit slower than it would be because I've left this message box in. Uh, maybe you'll see there, I keep having to close this window myself. Maybe I'll actually get my bot to close it as well instead. So I could say window action. Once you've finished your process, go in and close that customer database window. And there you'll see, the build of a simple process, but definitely a very valuable one uh, and very straightforward to build. It's, you see every command I was using was all very drag and drop. It's going to be reliable because I'm doing object based automation. It means that this web page could change slightly and I'm not going by coordinates. I'm going actually by object properties. So if that first name field was to move, I'm still going to pick it up. I'm still going to be able to find it because I'm going object based. So a short example of how we can develop an automation there, but definitely a very valuable one. Um, I will continue to expand on this and I'll show you some other features that we can go through as well. So another possible practice, which is good to follow along with is the inclusion of steps. And now all of these are short district descriptive commands. So I could say register customer and I could go and drag and drop that command in there. It means I can close that section. Configuration, so any bot configuration steps I could put within this action here. Keeps everything tidy, keeps everything nice and organized. Now, an extra piece that I can also go into as well. We've taken a look at a few different things using the recorder, using loops to make our code repetitive, using if statements to make our code and our bots do different actions based on different scenarios. Well, 
it was all very simple, very straightforward to build. It's also a really powerful tool, Automation 360, for uh, maintaining your code. I once had a customer that had a process very similar to this, and they came to me once and they said, Zach, we've got a problem. Previously, this process used to run off of a CSV file. So it used to run off of a CSV file. We used to have it all stored within the files and folders like we do here. But now we have moved and we're now going to start using databases. We're gonna use a database instead. And they said, well, how much effort is this going to require for us to rebuild this section of the box? Well, they expected it to be weeks of development and I very simply said, don't worry, I'll show you. And I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna turn this box from reading from CSV files and inputting to a customer database to reading from a database and putting it into our web portal. You will see how simple and how easily modifiable this code is. So I'm gonna remove a few steps possibly. So I'm gonna drag this up here. Maybe I can collapse that. Now this section here, where it's for each file in a folder, that can go now. That's not relevant to us anymore. We're not working with files anymore. We're gonna pick up this information straight from a database. Uh, I do have a database on my documents. I've got one in a simple access database just for ease of use and so I can showcase it nicely. And in here, I have a customer data table. We've got a couple of different customers within here. So we are gonna, configure our bot so that now it picks up from this database instead. You'll see how simple a change it really can be. So we deleted that open CSV. Now I'm gonna go and head over to my database commands. Of course, we now wanna work with a database. So it's nice and easy, nice and useful. I can drag across my connect command, connect to the relevant database that I want to. It can be a SQL circle server, can be a Postgres saga, uh, but I'm gonna go for Microsoft Access, of course. So I'm gonna point it towards my database. If I was using a different type, then I just give the database connection string. But for us, we're gonna go for an access. So once I've connected, it means I'm hooked into that database. Well, I actually want to go and read my data. So I wanna do a select statement. So I can use this read from command. It means it's gonna grab that data, read it, and populate it into our memory for us. And in this case, I'm gonna say, okay, well, let's go ahead. I'll do a fairly simple one. And I'm gonna select the star, which is a select all. So it's gonna go and grab me all of those different customers and specify the table that I want to. So I'm gonna go and select everything from this customer data table. So that's gonna go and fetch the records for me. And now, I can really simply just come in this loop reason. Well, in this case, it's not for each row in a CSV anymore. It's actually for each row in my data set. I can still send it to the same variable, it means I don't have to make too many other modifications. And I'll give it a save, give it a run, and let's see if it works. And there we go. It's going and completing that process for our customers that are contained within the database. So that customer that then came to me expecting weeks of development, I think we managed to fix that in around five minutes. We just did there. So it really shows the power of the tool, not only for being very straightforward to build within, really easy to learn, really straightforward, really understandable, but also extremely easy to modify and maintain. And you can see this flow view, really nice way to see our code. If you're more of a traditional coding type, then you can change it to a list view. And it really shows us the power of Automation 360 and the benefits and a whole host of capabilities. Uh, so that is your very straightforward introduction to Automation 360. Uh, thank you very much for watching that. Uh, if you have any questions, I believe, I think Anne will confirm, but I believe we do have a section for a Q&A. So feel free to ask any questions about Automation 360, anything you've seen, I'll try and answer to the best of my ability. Um, but yeah, just to recap, 
really quick process there. So definitely beneficial a process I've seen a number of times. We built that in around 20 minutes or so. So it really shows the power of the tool where we could go out and start running that within our business and immediately start seeing benefits. Yeah, no, so Zach's right. If you have any questions, there's a questions panel and go to webinar. If you want to pop that out or expand it, you can write your question in there and we'll, we'll see it and he'll go ahead and answer it for you. And um, just while he's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and um, just show you one little thing. Um, Zach, would it, well, just while we're waiting for questions, would it be okay if I just um, took over and went to the, the website? to show your yep. classes. Okay, Definitely. cool, thank you. Okay, so hopefully you can see the Accelerate site. And I'm just gonna go ahead and find RPA. And we are down to, oops, sorry. Automation Anywhere. And these are the four classes that we have right now, and Zach can teach all of them, but it's really just a jumping off point. So if I click, let's say, for example, the first one, Automation Anywhere 360 Certified Advanced RPA Professional, uh, and you go there, you'll see, uh, it scroll down, you'll see a list of objectives and an outline. Really, this is just a starting off point and a place to jump off and if you get Zach on the phone, he's really good at pinpointing what a team needs and can kind of take topics maybe from this class or another class and uh, just make sure that you get the class you get, uh, sorry, to make sure you get the class that you want that's gonna fit the needs of your team. Um, and he also does teaching uh, half days, how, however is needed, or full days. Like this is a four day class, but you know, your, your team may not have four days to, to be in class, so he's, he's great about that. Um, you can always, you know, request the pricing or contact us through the site. But as soon as we close out this webinar, you'll get a little pop-up um, just asking you your thoughts about the webinar. And this is a really good place to say if there's anything specific that you're looking for. So whether you just need it for your, your own team or for your organization, um, let us know and we can get you to talk to Zach and he can, he can really pinpoint what you all need. Um, let me just go back to questions just to see if there's there's anything that came in. Um, Zach, I don't know if you want to take a look as well. Yeah, you might sure. be able to see something that I can't. Yeah, so there's a few questions here. So um, let me go through uh, a couple of them. So uh, one mentions, are there qualifications and certifications for Automation 360? So yes, definitely. There's a couple of different levels of certification that Automation Anywhere offer. Uh, there is the advanced level and the master level. Uh, so the advanced level is actually the course that uh, Anne just showed there. And this basically specifies that someone is at the level where they can begin to build bots. Uh, and again, this shows how powerful Automation 360 is as a tool, is that training course is a four-day course, as mentioned, and that can take someone from the space of being a complete beginner, uh, doesn't have to have an IT background, comes in as a business user, in the four days, we can take someone to a certification level where at the end of the uh, training course, they will actually be able to go out and build their automations. And I'm sure you'll be able to actually see and understand that from what I just showed you there with that live build of a bot. I didn't do anything mind blowing there. It's all very straightforward. It's just about learning the tool. Um, so yeah, so yeah, definitely some qualifications and certifications there. Um, any other questions? Is that action list all of the commands that are available? Uh, so you'll see that on the left hand side i had all of those different actions that i was picking from that isn't actually all of the commands that you have at use as well that's actually kind of the the bare bones automation anywhere have a online kind of ecosystem where you can go and download extra commands that they've built so you can continue to add to your command library so if there was maybe some software there that you didn't see uh, i'm sure there is an inbuilt command for it uh, let me pick out maybe one or two more. Uh, so the recorder, uh, someone says, will the recorder command work with our own self-developed software applications? So yes, that's that universal recorder works with near enough any application, be it web-based, uh, locally installed application, even if it's something that your company has developed specifically for themselves, 
it's all object based like everything on your screen it counts as an object so it's something that you can interact with so therefore the bot will be able to as well so, so yeah definitely a yes there um, maybe I'll pick something else as well let's go for one more uh, range of bot size what do I tend to find what do I tend to find for the range of bot size so I think the person here is asking um, are these small bots or these big bots well completely varies again like I said how it lends itself to business users and seasoned developers as well you can have business users building smaller bots maybe like this one small but still extremely beneficial however I've also seen RPA bots which are massive massive large scale has four different machines running it runs 24 hours a day um, completing a finance process maybe which goes and completes the registration and extraction of invoices so there really is no limit it caters from small to large which again is where I think automation anywhere also stands out from its rivals as well is it really lends itself to big processes small processes experienced users and also beginners as well so yes, uh, any other questions at all? If so, feel free to fire them away. Yeah, great. And just if we're waiting for another one, um, uh, just to let you know, these the, the the two courses here in the middle are if if you're using version 11 and you need to get to version 360. Um, or that's actually the second course. And then the third one is if you're still on version 11 but you want to become the certified advanced rpa professional and that fourth one um intelligent automation for executives that's more of an overview um so if i'm correct zach you're not they're not going to be you know doing um ha hands-on development but it's just kind of a good uh overview for people who may be leading an rpa team yes so so that bottom one is it's um it's a bit different it's one of my favorite courses actually i think it's quite a special one because it says intelligent automation for executives. It's actually more than just for executives. It can be for anyone within your organization. Um, often within projects that I've worked for, I have found it used just to educate team members as to what automation is. It's all very well going in and starting your project, but if no one actually understands the technology and what it can be used for, then you're gonna struggle. So that's why I wrote that course. And through that course, what mm -hmm. we do is we speak about RPA, I show use cases, real life examples of um, real life examples of bots that have been built, pri uh, processes that have been automated. We tend to speak to the customer as well to see, okay, well, what industry are you in? Helps us really tailor the courses for you guys, and that's something we do with all our courses. Um, so as well as that, as well as talking about RPA, we actually talk about intelligent automation. That's why it's called the intelligent automation. Or executives course because we move on from more than just RPA we talk about how you can combine RPA with machine learning artificial intelligence uh, intelligent document processing and that's a really short course it's around two hours three hours um, and it's used just to educate your organization and as well as that really helps with coming up with ideas for processes and finding out what you can automate within your business Right, and I think you gave us a snapshot of this course. We got about an hour of this course, and it was it was really good. We learned a ton in, that, in an hour, so I can imagine in, in half a day what you can do. Um, but uh, I think that's all I'm seeing here in terms of questions. Um, well, we almost have um, top of the hour. So um, I don't know, Zach, is there, is there anything else, or you want to wrap up? Um. I, th I think that's all good for me. Um, of course, I'm sure if anyone wants extra information, they can reach out to you. Um, my Absolutely. only other thing, I'd maybe big up our training courses a bit more and say that, of course, if you do see something, if maybe you caught a glimpse of a command that you saw, but it hasn't been mentioned in one of our training courses, we always like to tailor things for the customer and make things relevant. Um, kind of comes from the background. Like I said, I've been a developer for around five years and transitioned into education. When I built these courses, I built them not as a trainer, I built them as a developer. So I built them as to what would I want to learn to be able to use and use this software and do my job to the best of my abilities. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, Zach, thank you so much for, for being here with us for the 
that are part of it. I really appreciate your time. And I also really appreciate all of the attendees' times. Thank you so much for coming out. We know this may be your lunch hour and you may be busy, but um, we're, we're just thankful that you're here. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, if you do have a moment to fill out the little evaluation, we really do read them and take them to heart. And this is a good chance for you to say what other webinars you might like to see. Um, people were interested in RPA, so we made it happen thanks to Zach. Um, so we'll see what we can come up with next. Uh, all right, well, with that, um, everyone have a wonderful day. Zach, thank you so much again, and, and thanks to everyone else for coming out, and have a great day. Thank you, Anne. Thank you all the attendees. As well. Bye. Yeah, thanks. Bye-bye.